All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we are starting, uh, we have a couple transitions. We're doing Canvas, then we're switching to AP, and then AP Central, and then I am actually teaching because we're behind. If you log into Canvas, there's a couple things I want to point out. I do have daily lectures. If you click on it, every day I post a lecture. If you are not here one day, I'm going to say, well, and you come up to me and like, Benny, what did I miss? I'm going to say, did you watch the video? And if your next answer is no, then there's not much I can do for you. The video is posted here every single day. All of your modules will always look the same. Now, when we're talking about modules, inside you will see it says do now. Click on do now. You are going to submit your do now here digitally. Now, please, before you get locked into this, please look. Look at me. Don't look at your phone. I want you to see that there's a document embedded on the last day of the week, which is today for week one. Remember, week one and two are all part of the Constitution. I will post the do now. So if you miss the do nows, I will always embed them in the assignment at the end of the week. Okay? So if you missed a do now going forward, do you ask me about it? No. I will post it on test day, which will be the end of the week, and then you can help yourself. If you missed a do now, please listen, because everyone's going to do this at some point. You handwrite it on your do now like normal, and you put it in my box. Once you put it in my box, then I will hand score it. Is everyone clear on that? Okay, so what you are doing right now is you are submitting your do now on Canvas. Yes, what do you got for me, Sophia? No, no, I got, I'll be cracking down on Canvas as we get going, but it's kind of a rolling thing. Yes, sir? It's only PDF, because if you do JPEG, it's like 12 photos and I'm just not doing one. It is only PDF. Okay, so every single person should be submitting their do now. Now, if you are new to my class, like Grant, today was your first do now. Take a picture of it, submit it, and I'll give you full points. Because tomorrow they're picking up a new do now, and we'll be good to go. Same with you, Katie. So take a picture, submit it, and I'll just give you the 20 points. It is not worth making up. But going forward, that way you know the procedures. Okay, sounds good? Perfect. Okay, so... While you are finishing up submitting your do now, I want to show you quizzes as well. Some of you owe me quizzes because you were absent. If you click on the quizzes tab, you will see that there's an embedded document. At the end of the week, which is what today is, today is the end of week one, we're going into week two, I have posted the quizzes. So if you have taken, if you need to take a quiz, download it, take it on a separate sheet of paper, and put it in my box. So do you need to ask me about a quiz? Nope. The only thing you need to do is take it. Do you have to take it in my class? No. If you're taking it at home, you're not supposed to cheat. Only so much I can do. There's only so much I can do. So don't cheat, don't be a crappy person. Put it in my box and I will add it to your scores of the week. They will be posted at the end of every week. Okay, so now please Take a look. I did post your grades for your quizzes. Ladies and gentlemen, please listen very carefully. If you are an eight or lower, you probably should drop this class. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If you are struggling that hard and you couldn't fix it, there's a problem there. Figure it out or get out. This is not a graduation requirement. So you already said check off that box in freshman year of high school. So, if you are struggling on vocab, please leave. Why? Because the problem is, is that vocab is the indicator of your effort for this class. If you're not putting in the effort, I don't want to deal with you. Okay? You sign up for an AP class. I'm teaching AP caliber. I'm going to hold you through it. Now, if you do really well on vocab, but you bomb my weekly test, I'm fine with that. The weekly tests are going to be hard starting next Thursday. They're, college, uh, they're from the AP Central. They're going to be hard. If you struggle on tests, but you do really well on vocab, I'm perfectly fine with that because I can teach you to take a test better. Your effort, there's nothing I can do about it. Do we see the difference between the two? When your mama, your daddy, or whoever loves you calls me to complain about your grade in my class, the first thing I'm going to say is, okay, just let's look at their vocab score. Your vocab score is your effort. Can we agree? 
your decision to show up every single day to do your job, that is the indicator. So if you are an eight or lower, I can't really help you unless you buckle down. Sorry, you've got to show up, be prepared. Okay, Declaration of Independence. Ladies and gentlemen, we have one thing to fill out and then you can submit it to Canvas. Here we go, take out your declaration right now, please. that didn't sorry guys great okay perfect submit it to canvas you need to take a photo of all pages for the pdf because when i check it i'll be making sure you're making the annotations the annotations mean more to me than anything else so take a photo of it and post it if you finish your focus you can also post your focus as well your vocab will be turned in in hand the assignment that actually took you the longest you'll actually be turning it in, in person. Perfect, that makes me happy. Okay, so I'm gonna give you about a minute more and we'll go. So right now, you should have submitted your due now. You should see that your quizzes are already online. Your primary source should be going in right now if it's not there already. Your vocab is not in because you have it until the 25th. And if you've already finished your focus, you might as well submit it so you can't lose it. The focus is the one from the book that has all the charts. So the single sheet of paper. You've got about 20 seconds. Okay, new building finally got air back. Isn't that nice? Were you displaced today at some point from new building? What a mess. What a mess. All right, here we go. No matter what you're doing on Canvas, close it out. If you haven't submitted something, it is on your time, not mine. Here we go. You're going to type in collegeboard.org into your phone. You should probably write these directions down, don't you think? Yes, sir. Uh, I couldn't do this uh, earlier today with my world class. Your AP world class? Yeah. Okay. Well, why don't we try again? Okay. Maybe better Wi-Fi. Did you close out of all of your apps? Did you restart your phone? Did you turn off your Wi-Fi and only use data? It, yes? Okay, close out all your apps, check all those boxes, and we'll try to figure it out. Okay, you're going to collegeboard.org. Okay, and this is what the screen looks like. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, with your fingers, show me how many exams you are signing up for right now. The answer is how much? How many, Jordan? Two. Two. You have two exams for this class. Two. Two. Fill them out. Take a look at my board over here, please. You have, you are in eighth period, so use eighth period code. This is AP Gov. This is AP Comp. They are two different columns. They are two different colors. They are two different codes because how many codes do you have to put in today? Two. two. Now, raise your hand if you have not enrolled in an AP course yet. Okay, you're gonna have a long time to go here. Okay, you need to use the same email that you used for PSAT and SAT. Whatever that email is, you need to be using the same one. Okay, did you get your codes down? code is working. Did you write twos? Those are twos. Yeah, B-W-T-T-R-4. Let me check. I'll check mine, but try typing it in again. That's a Y or a four at the end. That's a Y. Oh, that's a Y? Yeah, that's a Y. Oh, yeah, that's a Y. Yeah, see? Look at this. Luke has my back. Look at Luke coming to my aid. Look at Luke coming to my aid. Luke, unexpected. What is the lane? 
Well, why is like a, like a book? I can see his confusion. Oh my god, I love all of your feedback so much. <laughs> Thank you, Luke. Coming my aid. Unexpected with a nice streak. Thank you, Luke, for making that abundantly clear as well, by the way. I got the feedback, Luke. I got it. I, I, Raise your hand if you've already signed up for both classes. Dude, you sound like try. I don't know what it is. I might be. Oh, okay. Because I had to ask him in Cal. I just don't know what it is. It's not SAT. It's not PSAT. It's not SAT. Put some like independence in this here. Yes, sir. So, um, I was just looking at the candidate stuff today. What if I have two candidates at the same time? Um, they'll tell you which one gets pulled first. And then you'll be excused, you'll be bumped. You'll be told months before. But you'll be told you'll have an excused absence on whatever quit, uh, whatever test you miss, and you'll do the makeup, which will be in the third week of AP. It's very common. It's not uncommon at all. Yes? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Yes, sir? So I signed up for an AP. They'll, they'll eradicate all the rosters. Sure. Yeah, they'll figure it out. And that has nothing to do with my guidance, and our AP coordinator will deal with all that chaos. No thank you. I think it's crazy we're doing this this early. Crazy, crazy, but here we are. Alex. What's the difference between gov and com? AP, US government, is all about? America. AP comparative government is America versus America. everybody. So we're looking at England, China, Russia, Mexico. Not everyone's really only six, but we're comparing against them. Okay, I'm giving you an additional three minutes to figure it out. If you haven't figured it out, it will become your responsibility, not my responsibility. I will be pulling my rosters tomorrow morning, and I will be starting to harass you if you haven't officially enrolled. Yes, ma'am, what do you got for me, Catherine? Yeah, because you made a security. But I can't bring my handwriting. Did you type it with a capital letter? I did that because I thought it was a Okay, then do create new password. Or try to reset. It says it's in your email. Like when you already typed out your password. Raise your hand if you're done. Raise your hand if you're done. Okay, we have like less than a third of the class. Okay. Okay, girl, I, I got that. It's fine. But there's people who can, and that's what I need to know. If you can't get it, ask your neighbor. Caesar, aren't you done? Yeah. Okay. Did you get it? Yeah, I got it. You're good? You got both? Yeah, I accomplished it. I accomplished it. <laughs> David, are you in? Yeah. You're done? Okay. <clears throat> Ford, you good? Okay, perfect. Oh, that's what I like to hear, Ford. So then why am I being included in the conversation? <laughs> Luke. I was thinking about it. 
Luke, there's internal thoughts and external thoughts. If it's an emergency, then like do the thing, dude. But like, I don't need to be included in should I, should I not. You got 19 seconds, and then we're moving on. In 19 seconds, it is your responsibility to complete this. Where's that focus going? The other, the blank assignment you have in your binder, Brennan. Yeah. Don't you think it would make it easier to just knock it out? Yeah. Yeah, you should. All right, here we go. Everyone's phone's away. Raise your hand if you have successfully enrolled in two AP classes just now. Raise your hand if you have not successfully enrolled. That is totally fine, but you do understand it is your responsibility, yes? You need to figure this out. Go home, reset programs, passwords, whatever you need to do, it is your responsibility, yes? Perfect, take out your notebook, let's go. Okay, we have finally finished the Declaration of Independence. Woo. We are now ready to head forward. So, underneath Declaration of Independence in your notebook, U.S. wins the Revolutionary War. This is the biggest thing you need to know about it. It is the first attempt at creating a government in the United States. You need to know it is the first attempt at creating a government in the United States and put a big star, maybe even on both sides, it failed. Confederation as a primary, like go through like we did with the Declaration. We're doing that in week three because we're talking about federalism or a centralized government, Articles of Confederation, talking about how it was and our new constitution, the federal government it has, would be a lovely way to talk about it, so that's where we're going to put it. So you will be looking at this document, it just will not be in week one or two. Strengths of the document, here we go. Strengths of the document. It is unifying all 13 uh, colonies sign it. It is unifying all 13 colonies sign it. This will make them states. It is, huh, this is the second point. It is completely based 
on Enlightenment ideas. It's the first document to do that. It is the first document. Luke, why don't you just flip that phone over? I'd hate for you to be distracted. You need to take a call. Go outside. Okay. It is the first document that is completely based on Enlightenment ideals. So that's pretty cool. Weaknesses. Okay. Weaknesses. You need to know there is no central slash federal. No central slash federal government. Why is that a big deal? We kind of talked about the do now a little bit. Why is it a big deal, Annie? Yes, it kind of turns into chaos. How many forms of currency do you think there was? 13. 13 forms of currency. Does that make things easier or harder? Yeah. How many different tariffs do you think there were coming in and out of these states? Billions of them. Tariffs are how much you charge products to come in and out of your territory? Yeah? Sophia, you've got to have some internal dialogue, girl. Internal dialogue. It's not just me and you. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, when we're talking about it, you need to understand that every state saw themselves as their own country, which made things more complicated when they all came together. So no centralized government, every state was its own entity, okay? The second major weakness is there was no way to hold each other accountable. With that being said, so say for instance, Georgia. Georgia starts to have a political decline and an economic decline. England's like, hell yeah, I'm gonna take Georgia. So England comes and conquers Georgia. Is that better or worse for the rest of the state? Worse, because of the na uh, the enemy, which used to be thirteen thousand miles away, is now, you know, at the <laughs> at the tip of North Carolina, South Carolina. That's a huge problem. So their interdependence was incredibly weak and fragmented. That's the big deal. All right. Biggest thing is Congress had practically no power. So there's three big weaknesses. Okay, Congress had practically no power or authority. So they used to come together and just argue and everyone would go home and say, well, that was a waste of time and nothing would get done. Have you been to meetings like that? You show up and everyone yells at each other and there's like good ideas that come out and then nothing happens. It was like the meeting never happened. Okay, that's what Congress was happening. So articles officially fall after Shay's Rebellion. Shay's Rebellion is the final nail in the coffin. Shay's Rebellion. Uh, it's taxes. People are upset about taxes, and they're going to over. They almost overthrow the whole government. It's pretty wild. And it's also about um, uh, war debts from the American Revolution. So it's got a lot of complications there. You just need to know it ends by Shay's Rebellion. Okay. So, Constitutional Convention is your next heading. So we have the Articles of Confederation. It's set up, it has strengths, it has weaknesses, but it fails. So then we have something called the Constitutional Convention. Constitutional Convention is not a document, it's the creation of a document. So keep that in mind. The Constitutional Convention, the biggest thing you need to know it, it was supposed to, you need to write this down, the Constitutional Convention was supposed to fix the Articles of Confederation. Constitutional Convention was supposed to fix the Articles of Confederation. They got in there and they're like, oh my god, this is such crap. <laughs> and so they crumple it up and say, let's start again. No, they start from scratch. They realize they can't fix it and start. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, and they start from scratch. Okay. A couple things you need to know, ladies and gentlemen. There are Federalists and Anti-Federalists during this time. 
you can actually, okay, so we'll start with the Federalist. If you're a Federalist, you believe in a strong central government. I would put Federalist and write central government next to it. Okay, so if you're a Federalist, you believe in a central government. You are pro-Constitution. You should probably note that too. If you are a Federalist, you are pro-Constitution. Okay, they want a strong central government, and they are anti-Bill of Rights. Major leaders are Hamilton, Madison, and John Jay. Okay. These are also the authors of the Federalist Papers. Federalist, Federal Papers, create a connection here. Okay, the Federalist Papers. They're so they are your major leaders. Who wins? The Federalists win long term, yes? But they do give caveats, because what do we have? We'll look at you. You're figuring it out. Perfect. People who are anti... Oh, by the way, I want you to put a little star. Wealthy plantation owners were Federalists. Okay? Wealthy people were Federalists. Educated people were Federalists. Business, large business owners were Federalists. Who were the leaders of the American Revolution? The poor people or the wealthy people? Who were leading it? The wealthy. The wealthy lead it. Why? They don't want to pay as much as taxes. <laughs> Who pays more taxes? The wealthy or the poor at this point? The wealthy pay more in taxes. So they don't want to pay taxes anymore and pay as much as taxes. So if they start a war, they don't have to pay as many taxes. And then when they create their own government, guess who's in control? The wealthy people who started the war. Here we go. Anti-Federalists is your next group. They wanted state power over everything. Anti-Federalists are all about state power. Okay? So, they wanted governors to be the most influential person in a citizen's life. How do we think about that today? Is DeSantis the most influential person in your life? No, he's not. He's not, but does he have a pretty big role in it? Hello? Yes. yes, absolutely. He has a big role, but he's not the biggest part of our role. Now, would we say Joe Biden has a bigger role? No, because he's a little bit further removed, but the fact that we have a three-body system that kind of pulls his power to the federal level. Keep in mind, just because we have three branches of government does not mean we have a federal system, okay? A little bit more complicated than that, but we'll get to it. Here we go. Anti-federalists wanted states to have more power, wanted governors to have more power, okay? Um, Anti-constitution. Okay? Their biggest They wanted a Bill of Rights. Did they get it? Yes, of course they do, because we have like the Bill of Rights. Okay, so we're going to see that both sides are going to have to come together to agree. That is why we have a Constitution. But as soon as we sign the Constitution, we sign what else into law? The Bill of Rights, yes? That's how we do it. That's why it's called an amendment. They added it. They fixed the document according to the selection. That's how we have it. Okay. So, you do need to know, ladies and gentlemen, there are four controversies at the convention. Write that down. Four major controversies. Place where they 
got family up there. Oh my gosh. I was just there, there last summer for the first time ever. Yeah, that's why I was like, I always fly out there because like my dad lives in South Jersey. So I always go to Philly Airport. There you go. Okay. But you've actually been through, wandered through yeah. the whole thing? That's yeah. pretty cool. I just thought, did you see the Liberty Bell while you were there? Yeah, I was ran up the stairs like Rocky. Oh god, you did the whole, you checked the whole list, huh? Yeah. You did the whole tourist thing, okay. I did not run up the stairs like Rocky. And I also didn't see the Grand Bell. Do we really care about the bell? Do you? Do, is it cool, Brenda? Yeah, I got that for cheesesteak. I had my first cheesecake cheese there. It was pretty good, it was pretty good. So I'm gonna send hi, so here we are. Alright, here we go. First controversy is representation in legislators. Okay? You don't know what a Philly cheesesteak is? Dude, you gotta get outside. You, 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 you gotta leave your home. There's like five Philly cheesesteak places in town, like on their sign, Philly cheesesteak. Your mom never made you a Philly cheesesteak? No. It sounds great. It's like shaved steak with cheese on it. On like a hoagie roll. And you get that fake cheese whip, so you Yeah. The cheese, don't go provolone, go cheese whip. Okay. Now, getting back to the actual content that will be on the exam. Regis, uh, representation. Okay, what this is is really big states versus little states. Now, if you're the smallest state in the union like Rhode Island, are you worried about a big state like New York taking all the power? Yes, absolutely. So that's something they had to deal with. So they created a bicameral system for Congress. You have the Senate which is an equal vote, write it down. Okay, so for representation in the legislature, you have the Senate, which has equal votes. Every state gets how many senators? Two, does anyone know any of our senators for the state of Florida? Marco Rubio. He used to be our governor. Rick Scott. Rick Scott, those are our two uh, senators, there's only two of them. Okay, so your Senate seat is equal. So Rhode Island has two. California, which is the most popular state in our union, also has two. And they make the biggest decisions and have the most impact. Our House of, Rep uh, House of Representatives, write it down, is based on population. You need to know that. So the big states get more power, yeah, they get more votes, they get more power, they get more influence. This is how they were trying to keep big states happy and small states happy. So the House of Representatives is based on population size. Does anyone have any idea how many Congress members we have? 21. Do we really? I don't think we have 21, do we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's like 16, isn't it? Is it? Is it a lot more than that? That's fine. I honestly don't know the statistics on that one. So, all right, when we're talking about it, it's so bigger states have more influence, okay? So it's to try to help balance this whole thing. The second major controversy is how much power do states have versus federal government, okay? They make purposely, not purposely, the federal government's pretty weak. You need to write that down. The federal government is created a little weak. Why? Why would they make it a little weaker on paper? Why? Why are they hesitant to giving the central government all this power? Why? The fact that one person coming in and taking over everything is terrifying. So they purposely make it weak. Okay? The central government, write this down, becomes strong because of Supreme Court cases. Write it down. So the branches of government are really going to come pull it together and strengthen it. The central government will be strengthened by Supreme Court cases. Oh my God. one yet, because we haven't had a government yet. Okay. Powers of the chief executive. The president is pretty weak on paper. Why? 
We literally just talked about it. Why, Ford? Exactly. So on paper, the president or the chief executive, it's the same title, we just casually call it a president, is weak on paper but strengthened by legislative branch, write it down, and Supreme Court or the judicial branch. His powers, so far, we haven't had a woman yet. It's coming though. Come on now, come on now. We've been voting for over 100 years. We gotta get one at some point. Come on now. Anyway, so far, all of our male presidents have gotten their power from the judicial and the legislative branch solidifying its powers. Okay? These things are purposely done. And finally, the last thing is slavery. How many times is slavery mentioned in the Constitution? Zero. Why? Why is it zero? Why do you think it's zero, Will? So you don't mention it? Why is it not mentioned, Reagan? Is it controversial or uncontroversial? What, controversial or uncontroversial? It's controversial, yes. So they didn't have a solution. Write it down. They didn't have a solution. Half the state, ah, okay, I'm not going to say half because that would be a lie. I'm saying a third of the states wanted to abolish it. Two-thirds of the state can't live without it. Okay, their entire economy is based on it. And keep in mind, they just went through the American Revolution. How well you think crops are doing? Not so well. They just went through a failed state, which is the Articles of Confederations. How well do you think everyone's doing financially? Not well. And then if you release all of the labor sources to make the income for the South, how's that going to go? Not well. The reason, write this down, the reason it's not addressed is to make sure everyone signs the document. The reason it's not addressed is because they want all of the states to sign the document. If they said no slavery, who's leaving? The South, okay? So that means half the country is gone, the tiny country that's struggling to be there. That's not a solution. They do mention, and you need to acknowledge this, no uh, um, unfree person. They don't say slave, they say unfree persons in the document. Write this down. Get out of here and play in high school. For population or, you know, use only. Students, if you're interested in joining the Pan Anime Club, there will be Alex, what's your question, my love? This is building the Constitution. Because we're in the Constitutional Convention and will eventually lead to the Constitution. Yes, ma'am. Unfree persons is the only language you will see, and it's used for population purposes. What is the name of the compromise? What's the name of the compromise, Sophia? Three fifths compromise. Okay, and it is used for population base. That is the huge deal. So the southern states, let's be clear, wanted their slaves to count so they could have more House of Representative votes. <laughs> but they did not want the slaves to count as people because then they'd have to be free. Tricky, tricky. And that was all done on a purposeful manipulation. Okay, four major... Uh, issues, representation and legislator, you could also put the three-fifths compromise underneath that. That's also a compromise. States' rights, power of executive, and slavery. Slavery is never officially addressed because they needed people to come to the table and sign the document. However, it is loosely touched with the three-fifths compromise. Now, when we're talking about the Constitution, okay, underneath it, you are going to write nice and big the Constitution. Alex, we're talking about a document now. These are all the things they had to kind of hash out right. so we could get to the document. Okay. Write it nice and big, ladies and gentlemen. If you know only one document in this class, what document should it be? Okay. Constitution. You need to know that it is signed in 1787. And ratified in 1788. What is the difference?
difference between signed and ratified? Oh my gosh, guys. What is ratified? What do you think it means, Jack? Nice job, Jack. Sign means all of these representatives agree. Ratified means the country agrees to live by these rules. Okay, so it takes a while. Yes, ma'am. 1787, it's signed. 1788, it is then ratified. 1791, there are three dates you need to know. 1791, the Bill of Rights are added. Mind. We agreed to add those before we got it signed. It had to get ratified. Then by the time we got everyone together, it takes a couple years to get those ratified and added. Anytime you add an amendment, they have to sign it into law in Congress. Then it has to go to the states for approval. Lots of state uh, laws or amendments to the Constitution do get added or signed into law by Congress, but they're not ratified to become amendments. Does anyone know which ones are sitting out there right now? The Equal Rights, okay, is a huge one. It does not get signed into law. Um, it's still ratified by over half of the states, but not all the states. So just because something is signed does not mean it gets ratified. It can die in the ratification process, and a lot of things do. For instance, one of the newest, uh, oldest, hottest, newest topic is abortion. There was an amendment to protect abortion rights passed in the 70s by Congress. 70s, the Congress agreed to make it an amendment, but then it got sent to the states to get ratified. Did it get ratified? No, which is why, what, three months ago, two months ago, the Supreme Court then overturned it, and now there's no federal protection for abortion. If it got ratified, could the Supreme Court have done that? No. So all of these things play into a huge part into the process. OK? Guys, are we excited we're here? No? OK. Oh, we still got to go through it anyway. All right. So tomorrow, we are going to actually hand out the Declaration of uh, the Constitution. And we're going to go through it together, annotate it. If you have not signed up for AP Central, that is priority one, ladies and gentlemen. That is the main. If you haven't finished your focus, you should maybe start it. So I do it till the 25th, so do you, Brennan, but like.